today we are going to discuss generator capability curve so i will start with this diagram this is our generator this is my induced emf e this is the net impedance between generator and the system this is my grid voltage so you can see here the nomenclatures e is equal to generator induced emf v equals to grid voltage i is generator load current so for an instant if this is plus this is minus so the current is flowing in this direction so i can write this diagram in terms of this equation e is equal to v plus iz now what is that z is equal to r plus jx where r is the resistance and x is the synchronous reactance let r is nearly equal to 0 so z will be equal to x so we can rewrite this equation as e equals to v plus ix now i want to draw the phasor diagram of this equation e equals to v plus ix phasor diagram will be like this this is v this is i operating at an power factor angle of 5 so what will be ix it is just perpendicular this line i this is my ix and summation of my v and ix will be equal to e and the angular separation between v and e is equal to delta delta is load angle now just focus on this diagram let's extend this line this is 90 degree this is 5 so this will be 90 minus 5 the angle which is vertically opposite to this is 90 minus 5 so this angle is coming out to be 5 now what i will do i will multiply this side this side and this side these three sides with the term v by x so what i am getting this is as v square by x this is as vi and this is as ev by x now take horizontal projection of this vi in this y axis we are getting vi cos phi take vertical projection of this line vi over the x axis we are getting vi sin phi so i can say this y axis stands for my vi cos phi that is real power or megawatt and this x axis stands for my vi sin phi that is megawatt so generator always generates megawatt but it can absorb megawatt or it can generate megawatt so the megawatt can be in positive x axis or in negative x axis but the megawatt will be always in positive y axis now we will derive the capability curve this is the capability curve you can see here the generator either it is sending reactive power or it is absorbing reactive power but it is never receiving active power so this, the generator cannot operate in this zone generator can operate only in this quadrant and this quadrant but the generator has certain limitations if suppose i will take this vi as radius and draw a semicircle this is the semicircle but the generator cannot operate at this zone and this zone let me explain you the reason behind it when generator is operating at suppose v and e voltage so suddenly if load increases then my phi this power factor angle will also increase and suppose if phi is increasing that means i have to give more field current to maintain my e because phi is shifting to this direction so my ix it will be shift to this direction in order to make perpendicular with i so the length of e is increasing and if the length of e is increasing from where we are getting e we are getting e from the field current so that uh, avr will regulate to send more uh, field current to the generator and this field current is absorbed by the rotor winding so the rotor winding has certain limitations beyond if max if we will inject field current the field winding may uh, damage due to overheating so e max is the maximum limitation similarly at lower power factor angle We we are getting a smaller e value, 
and that is my minimum field current limitation okay so at minimum field current uh, what is happening we are absorbing reactive power so at that time also there are uh, certain regions of generator where overheating may occurs so generator operates this this line is ev by x so i can also say this line stands for my e induced voltage so by taking a radius like this generator can operate up to this point this is my over excitation limiter now by taking a smaller radius this is my under excitation limiter uel now coming to this diagram p is equal to ev ev by x sin delta all of you know generator can maximum operate smoothly up to 90 degree or we can say at 110 or 120 degree that is critical tearing angle so if this is v generator can operate uh, in a smooth manner up to this point but this is ideal line what is the practical line it is somehow lesser than the 90 degree so this is the safe zone for generator to operate so we are also getting this load angle limiter line which is also coming under under excitation limiter so finally what we are getting a line like a curve like this then like this then this is my full ability of generator of the load current that is stator over current and after that the over excitation limiter like this so the total zone is the capability curve of the generator within which our generator can operate mostly during day time the generator operate in this zone and during night time the generator operate in this zone I mean during day time the generator is sending reactive power q q is positive and during night the generator is absorbing reactive power so q is negative the reason behind this is that during day time uh, in grid the inductance is dominating the line capacitance so we have to feed more reactive power because inductors are absorbing reactive power but during night the line capacitance they are dominating the load inductances so there is abundance of reactive power in the grid so it will be sent back from the grid to the generator so this is during the night time this zone okay thank you i hope this will give you uh, some clarity regarding generator capability curve okay